Hey guys, Terry here for Rev3 Games, and I have the great pleasure of being joined today by Peter Molyneux of 22 Cans, formerly Lionhead Studios. Yes. You guys have been very, very busy lately. Yes. Um, I yes. think the last time I spoke with you, you had just finished Curiosity. Yep. You were in the middle of the Goddess Kickstarter. Yeah. Yep. And now, a year and a half later, the game yep. is out on Steam Early Access. Yes. How has this experience been for you? And is it at all what you expected it would be well, like? Well, it, it, it's, um, <clears throat> it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Really? Yeah. Because you, there's nowhere to hide. You, you go on to, you know, ever since we released Curiosity, that, that was an insane time, and there was all these millions of people tapping and the servers going wrong, and then we made a mistake and wiped everyone's gold, and then we had to give the gold <laughs> back. And, and then while that was going on, we did our Kickstarter campaign, and suddenly, you know, someone pointed a camera at me and said, tell us all about the game, Peter. And, I, and the way that I work, which is a crazy, insane way of working, is not to, to, to come up with a design Bible, not to write, you know, I couldn't give you, here's the design of Goddess, this mm -hmm. is what it's going to be. It is, okay, you know, on the first page I would write, let's try doing some sculpting and see how that works. And this is the way I design games, to, to get the team to implement something, mm -hmm. see how that goes, throw it away or keep it. And so going going from curiosity to Kickstarter, being forced to, to kind of think of all the ideas that I'm going to have up front rather than this crazy way of iterating, then going from that into Steam Early Access, which is this opportunity to let people in on the development. You know, rather than waiting for the game to be finished, you can give them a little tiny slither, a slice of the game. And even though you say on the Steam front page in big letters, this is not a finished game, it's full of bugs, it's going to be boring. It actually, these are the words it says, it's going to be boring, it's going to be tedious. But if you're interested to find out, you know, look at how Goss evolves and play Giving that out early on has been, you know, terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. It, it seems like kind of a catch-22 with Kickstarter, because on the one hand, and especially Steam Early Access, you have this input and feedback from people that's so valuable to the mm. development of the game. But on the other hand, people are able to give their opinions early. And mm. does part of you feel like maybe they're prematurely judging the game, even though they know it's early? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's like anything, you know, I, the, the way I, I've got this crazy analogy, this stupid analogy, and, but it, it's a kind of analogy that fits. Imagine I was um, building a kitchen. Okay. And imagine my wife comes in and has a look at, my ki at the kitchen and, then, you know, I've torn down all the, all the walls and it's just a mess and she says, God, that's not going to work. You know, this is rubbish. It's not never going to work. And then I build a bit more of the kitchen. And she comes in and says, oh, I don't like a shelf being there. I'm the only one with a picture of this final kitchen in mm -hmm. my head. And she's the one that's coming in and saying, oh, the shelf doesn't look good. I don't like that, you know, that there. It's not until the, gate, until the kitchen's finished that she can come in and say, oh, this is brilliant, worth all that effort. And that's the problem with Kickstarter and Early Access is you're showing people little tiny bits of the game and that you're asking them which is very hard to do to put those bits together mm -hmm. and to say actually i think you know it's all going to work it, it, it is very very difficult for for people who are playing the game to stick with it and it's very different for for designers especially um to actually think look i've got a whole army and this is what happened in 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 early years. i've got an army of people here that that are the saying, you know, fix this or take that feature out. We, we hate that feature. We actually had people saying, I'm going to commit suicide unless you take that no. feature out. I mean, you know, these are, these are big statements. Oh, Lord. And then as a designer, you've got to say, you know what, either they're right or they're wrong. And it's so tempting to follow the direction of the crowd. Oh, I'm It's sure. so tempting to think, Okay, I'm just going to let them give them what they want, but no, you've got to stay true to your mm -hmm. to your big vision. You've got to stay true to the thing that you're, the final thing that you're trying to create. Because mm -hmm. if you, if you're inspired by the community, brilliant, amazing, incredible things can happen. Mm -hmm. But if you're intimidated or bullied by the community, which I've seen games and you know all sorts of creative ventures being being bullied, 
then bad things can happen. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I, knowing what you know now, is this mm. something you would ever consider doing again, kickstarting a game like this? Well, you, uh, as terrible as it is, it's also <laughs> beautiful. It's also an incredible way. I, I, I think the only way, uh, this is the incredible thing to say, it's the only way to make a, a, a game in today's world, I think. Mm -hmm. Because what you are able to do is you're able to test little bits out. And there's two things that you can do if you do it right. Whenever we released a version on Steam Early Access, we looked at people's comments, and some people, the efforts they went through are truly awe-inspiring. You know, they'll write email after email, they'll give feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's some people that put over 600 hours wow. into testing the game. I mean, that is, you know, it's That's astound. incredible. It is incredible. And those people, you know, you, you really respect it. And you, what you've got to do, you to stay true to your vision and you've got to look at their feedback. But the other thing you've got to do is use this, this stuff called analytics. And the analytics, there's two types of analytics. There's something I call analytic porn, which is when people talk about how DAUs or ARPU, these, all these terms mm -hmm. which are about how many people are playing at the moment. I'm not interested in that stuff. What I'm interested in is what people are doing at certain points in the game. If I can use, look at it and I can say, right, a thousand people are going left rather than going right. That is an incredible observation. Mm -hmm. If you put those two things together, the feedback from the community plus the analytics, what you're able to do is craft a game experience which is, can be very, very unique because you don't have to pre-think of everything that mm -hmm. people can do. You can actually learn from it. Yeah. So as terrible as it is, as vehemently as people have, have, have uh, been aggressive about their, their feedback, I'd, I'd do it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I try and make a bigger banner. I'd, I think I would have, this is, this is probably what I did. If I did another Steam Early Access game, I would have this massive voiceover in the game that would be that would that would shout out while you're playing the game every five minutes saying, "This is not a finished <laughs> game. Do not think it's a finished that game." That would be brilliant, yeah. actually. I mean, that's what we should have done because you yeah, have to like they do on like pre-release albums yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, and it, it's amazing how people kind of forget that we had this reviewer. There's this magazine called, um, this website in, in uh, UK called Eurogamer. And there's this journalist on Eurogamer, and he did a whole critique of Steam Early Access, of the Steam Early Access of Goddess. And he mm -hmm. you know, went into great detail, and he basically, it was quite a negative argument, um, uh, article, and he said, you know, well, I'm not sure that Goddess can ever be fixed. And at the end, he said, even though I've played this game for 30 hours, we, um, I don't think I can recommend it. And I, you know, when I saw that article, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to go over there and shout those words, this is not a finished game. Yeah. But, you know, it's a fascinating process. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you, um, one, of the, one of the main complaints that I've heard about mm -hmm. the early access version of the game is that it kind of resembles the free-to-play model where yeah. there's a lot of waiting. Yeah. Um, how, how do you respond to that criticism? Yeah, I mean, there was, there was one, one or two of the versions where we were experimenting with wait times and to see how long it is, how long is too long to wait. Now, there's a couple of things. Forget about free-to-play just for a moment. Okay. There, and let's talk about one of the fundamental problems that computer games have is that, and I'll start explaining this by talking about Fable. You know, we, um, <clears throat> 150 people spent two uh, years in Fable 3's case and three years in Fable 2's case, you know, working insanely hard on making Fable. And we released it on a Friday. By the time Sunday came, most of the people who brought it on Fable had finished Fable. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is... You know, insane. Yeah. I mean, made those people probably didn't go to, to bed, but that, you know, they'd <laughs> consume the whole content. And as a designer, what, 
really you want to do is give people a game that isn't just going to be for a weekend. Mm -hmm. It's a game that can be for a long time. And so that's one part of the equation. The other part of the, the equation is that <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff to do in Goddess. There's a lot of different things to do. There's sculpting, there's looking after your people, there's building different things, there's going on voyages. And if I can persuade you to not just do this one thing over and over and over again, but say, okay, I'll, I'll just pause on that, I'll just go off and do some of this. Mm -hmm. So on a couple of versions of Steam Early Access, we played with the wait times. We had, uh, we, I think it was about 15 minutes. It took 15 minutes for a follower to build a house. And we used the analytics to watch what would people do if it was 15 minutes. A lot of people turned the game off. Some hmm. people did exactly what we wanted them to do and thought, oh, right, I'll, while they're building that house, I'll go off and do, do this else. thing. So this was all part of us learning what were the right right times. Now, if you played the game now, I think you'd find that there are a couple of things with those wait times. Firstly, you can solve the problem. As a player, you can solve the problem. If you want to evolve your people a certain way, if you want to push them hard, if you want to demand that they work 24 hours a day, God, don't care about them being happy at all. You just want them to work, work, yeah. work. And because be you want to And be mean. Yeah. Fine. That's fine. Your people are probably going to be insanely unhappy. So if you have a look at the latest version of, of Goddess, um, we've now got this little bar. It's down on the right-hand side of the screen. It shows you how happy your followers are. If you don't want those wait times, that's fine with me. Your happiness is going to be down there because your followers... They do want, they mm -hmm. want breaks, they want time off. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to instill in your mind. You're not dealing with little robots, you're dealing with little followers. Mm -hmm. um, I want to switch gears for a second yeah. um, because I think we have a unique perspective from you here because uh, last time we talked, it was still the last generation of consoles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's, everything is different. Technology is, yeah. is changing so fast. I'm curious yeah. to know what you see for the future of yourself and your company in all this new technology mm -hmm. and, and what you personally are most excited about? Well, it's a wonderful time to be a designer. Um, I, you know, you've got, over the last five years, we've had, you know, the craziness of Connect. We've had motion controlling come, uh, come and almost go. We've had touch come along. That seems to be here to say we've got the, the amazing Oculus Rift and all the spin-offs from o Oculus Rift. We've got you know two new consoles, uh, three if you could include the Wii U. There's so <laughs> much going on. The problem is, the real problem is for us in the games industry, it takes teams and designers a long time to squeeze the goodness out of any of this new technology. You know, to, to, oh, to, yeah. to make a great game, a great game for Oculus Rift is going to be really tough. Mm -hmm. You cannot just convert a first-person shooter to Oculus Rift. It's going to take um, reinventing the way that you play those games. The same with touch is that, you know, I think when I, me as a gamer, I first got this, this, I was actually disappointed with most games on here. It's only now that games are coming out, I'm thinking, you know what? This is impossible. Mm -hmm. And when I was, I can start to see the glory of it. So with all this new technology, it does take teams a long time, years, to get their teeth into it and to squeeze the goodness out of it and realize what's good about it and bad about mm -hmm. it. So part of me wants to just say, just stop, right? We've got enough mm -hmm. stuff now. Let's just we'll stop for work a while on what we and have. just work on what we have. But of course, the world isn't like mm -hmm. Well, this is probably a premature question, but mm. what do you see as the future of your company after Goddess? Is there anything? Well, I mean, this obviously is, there yeah, is, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you don't, nowadays, you don't finish a game. You know, the day of release of Goddess is just another day of development. Mm -hmm. And if we, if people start playing the game and they're enjoying the game, we can we are going to take them on this amazing journey because at the moment when we release Goddess, you'll be able to take your little people, 
through the primitive times into kind of the Bronze Age times, and we want to take you all the way up to space. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take us a little while to that's do. That's awesome. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is going to be an incredible experience mm -hmm. where on this device and, and on PC, I can update your version. This is the amazing thing. I can update your version from here. While I'm on camera, I can, I can press a button and really? update people, everyone's version. And that Ooh. is the amazing thing to be yeah. able to do. So we're going to take people on this, continue to take people on this journey. While we do that, we are going to spend a couple of months really focusing on the PC and making sure that the PC, because I think the, the players on PC are a little bit different from players on mobile. So we're going to focus on them and, and give them a little bit of, uh, of love. We're going to focus on the multiplayer side. We are going to start looking at other formats and we are almost certainly going to do another experiment like curiosity mm -hmm. because I've got this this fascinating idea yeah for, uh, well you guys have uh, what 22 of them planned in total so. <laughs> yeah I mean we did about five of them on curiosity I and mean, then you oh. could argue that steam early access was part of you know those slices we sent out were part of that but the next experiment I'd l I would just love to do it's such a simple little experiment but I'd love to find the time to do that yeah. so I, ho I hope this year sometime we find the time to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for whatever mm. you guys have in the pipeline. I think the entire development of this game has just been fascinating to it watch. Is, it, is, it is. And I can't wait to see what you guys do thank next. You. Peter Molyneux, thank you so much thank for your you time. Thank you very much. Now, if you played Borderlands 2, then you should be familiar with him already. He is the half-human, half-robot engineer. He's one of the bosses in Borderlands 2 that you fight. But in the pre-sequel, you actually get to go back in time to when he was completely human, and you get to witness the events that led up to him becoming more than human. As far as gameplay goes, he is...